Hey guys, and welcome to the first episode of When Things Go Wrong. Today, I'm throwing myself in the deep end and we'll be looking at my horror flight as a PG2 at Middle Brother. And don't forget, as always, like and subscribe. Thanks. Here is a very nice aerial view of the southeast launch next to the transmission tower. It's a small launch area, and just to make it fun, there's a razor-tipped fence which has been carefully designed to shred wings and impale people, which made me nervous. On this particular day, it was very light conditions and there were some other pilots eager to go. I failed to bring the wing up straight, and instead of walking away from the fence and correcting it, I decided to turn and burn. You can see here I get dragged off to the left as I'm not under the wing and I only just clear the launch. Oh shit! Jeez, I hope I'm going to make it. <laughs> Fucking hell! Just to make matters worse, I had no understanding of thermals and was failing to utilise any lift areas. So for the rest of the flight, I'm basically just shitting my pants. Launch had really frightened me, I had very little height, and the thing that frightened me the most was my lack of ground speed. I was moving really slowly. That's a pilot on the radio. He's trying to tell me that he doesn't think I'm going to make it. He suggests flying left a little and taking advantage of a slight westerly breeze so that I'd have a bit of tailwind to increase my speed and total distance. At this stage, I was just flying straight and I felt too low to make any adjustments to my flight path. For a good part of that flight, I was literally just looking at which tree I might crash into, hoping to get closer to the paddock so that my rescue wouldn't be too difficult. I realised later that I was flying on minimum sync for that flight. I would have been better off, hands up, trim speed for maximum distance. was fucking horrible. So what did I learn? First up, trim versus minimum sync. So I hadn't flown for almost six months since I'd finished school. So everything that I'd learnt in theory had kind of gone out the window. So uh, if you have had a break, I suggest brushing up on all the basics. So in this situation, yeah, just being hands up for uh, maximum glide would have been the best option. All right, number two, ground handle. Uh, having the ability to stabilize and control your wing on launch and abort when you need to. Um, obviously, I was worried about that fence, but if I had better skills, then I could have corrected it or just put it down straight away uh, when I knew it was coming up wrong. It's obviously a good idea to practice your forward launches for those light wind scenarios too. I'd love to know how many of you actually use a forward launch technique because I know a lot of us tend to do a reverse and then a turn and burn, so let me know in the comments. Last but not least, I should have considered not launching at all. My confidence was low, my skill level was low, and ideally for me, I would have been better off waiting for the wind to pick up a bit so I had a little more pressure in the wing and more stability and time on my launch. So there were some other more skilled pilots waiting and ready to go, and perhaps I put some unnecessary pressure on myself that day. We all have different skill levels, we all have different confidence levels, so launching is up to us. While it is a sport where you do have to push your comfort zone a little, ultimately, don't worry about what other people are doing, and if it's not right for you, wait for conditions to improve, or just fly another day. I hope you've enjoyed today's content, and that by sharing my experience, I may have helped some of you out there. If you have a story or footage you'd like to share, please contact me on the Danger Dave Facebook site. Until next time, this is Danger Dave, signing out.